Welcome, welcome to Senior Parent Guardian Night. Yes, for the class of 2024. Go to get your favorite beverage, get your comfy chair. If you're watching Ahsoka in the background, turn that off. There is way too much information going on right now. Come on in, come on in. Again, welcome to our wonderful senior parents and guardians from the class of 2024. On behalf of St. Ignatius and on behalf of St. Ignatius Counseling Department, we are so thrilled. Now, we know we are dealing with wonderful senior parents and guardians with wonderful seniors. So when we say this is a moment to inform you to relax, go get that aroma ready, get your little balls, just don't pop them, right? And if it's still stressful at the end, you can always get some Tums later on. But let's just get a moment of deep breath. And remember, we are all in this together. And there's one prayer that I say with my, my own family and I wanna share with you. It's known as a serenity prayer. God grant us the serenity to accept the things we cannot change, the courage to change the things we can, and the wisdom to know the difference. Let's go from there. Families, what we're gonna do today is talk about your important role as a parting guardian with your senior student. We'll be reviewing the college applications, score overview, paying for college, and final thoughts. And if that sounds a lot, remember, we are here for yeah. you. Well, we cannot begin unless without our wonderful counseling teammates here. These are the dynamic 70, 75 years of experience. Yes, way to the crowd, everyone. Uh, we have the wonderful Mr. Lorenzo. I am here, Ms. Vaccaro, Ms. Wong, Ms. Kemper Verity, and Mr. Lucchesi. Yes, we are all here tonight, 75 years of experience. Yes, I'm the old one over here. They will be in the background taking all your questions on Q&A. So, so if you are a senior parent, say your guardian, what should you be doing? The key thing that's so important is encouraging your student to have a balanced life. You may be thinking, well, what does that have to do? with the college well think about right now your kids are dealing with schedule is their class schedule balance second how's all their activities everything every day and that college list everything needs to be balanced because that wellness that safety first we taught our kids when we were little still continues today so it's so important for you to kind of monitor maybe this is a little bit too much maybe you should consider this you are really their guiding light their guiding voice their, your voice is so critical in this process you also want to assist your student in creating a schedule right yeah creating a schedule now i heard a parent say today and i relate to this too with all my beautiful kids it's like i don't want to talk to you about college right now okay then have them schedule a time right they're becoming young adults so let's schedule time once a week, 10 minutes. And then when that time comes, everything is off. Yes, even your cell phone, put it away and let's create a to-do list. Put that to-do list on a refrigerator, something that works. If you have a shared Google calendar with your family, put it on there, managing deadlines. Yeah, there's a lot of executive work and decisions that have to be done. And that's why approaching this as a family, but making sure while you're doing that, that you're playing the role of the consultant, not the manager, right? How I would help my fourth grader is gonna be so different than how I'm gonna help my senior. And we want them to take charge in this process, but give friendly reminders just like a consultant would. Because remember, in one year, they're going to college on their own. It's so important to pre prepare for them in that process and give them those reminders. Yes, students need to check their emails on college reps. If they have not cleared out their emails, this is an amazing time to do that because maybe there's a regional rep meeting that just went out to students on their mailing list. Maybe SCORE or information has said, hey, your college that's on your list is coming here to SI. So it'd be great to, to have them schedule a time to go through those emails. And there's a lot. Don't forget to have them to also unsubscribe to the emails of the colleges they're not applying to. 
Now, we do encourage students and they need to take that role of contacting the college admission folks, their representatives making the decision on their colleges because they want to hear from them, the students. But you may have a million questions. Well, have that student ask that. But if you have questions, whether maybe merit aid, scholarships from the campus, financial aid, there'll be a lot this year. Yes, parents and guardians, you can contact the financial aid office, but only the financial aid office. Okay. And I did that too as a parent. I know it's hard, but it's really important because we want your student to represent themselves really well, really bright with the college representatives at all the different admissions offices. And then also, you know, you are their guardians, their angels, their protectors. And as a protector, you have to be flexible. If you're the goalie on the soccer field, you're not just staying one way. You have to be able to move this way and that way. If your kid's getting on the defensive, you still have to cheer them on because they know with that unconditional love, you have their back no matter what. You have their back no matter what decision they have. You have their back no matter what. And you know this, and you just have to remind them. If it seems like they're not listening, trust me, they're listening. All right, now we're gonna go look into the college application overview. Thank you so much, Ms. Vaccaro. Okay, so I'm gonna kind of go into the nuts and bolts um, of this application process. So part of um, building your team with your student and being um, a support system is helping them build a balanced list, All right? So we always encourage students to apply broadly. So this is just an example of a broad list of colleges. So we recommend three to five far reach slash challenge colleges. So normally this would be any college that has an acceptance rate of lower than 40%. Right, and then th three to four possible. So this could be 40% to about 60, 65%. And then very likely is anything above 65%. And then we also have this beautiful image here of a scattergram. So students also wanna use a scattergram um, on their score page. I believe uh, parents have this view also to see you know, where students fall for that particular college. Right, and this is what your college counselor um, is here for to help you um, find that balance list, right? So we'll make suggestions, we'll talk it out with your student, and we can talk it out as a family as well, um, just to make sure you have a range of colleges that you're applying to. This is just an example of um, a list that we wouldn't, that we would, you know, say, let's think about some of these very likely um, and likely schools, right? So if a student had eight far reach slash challenge schools, two possible and no likely schools, All right? So for likely colleges, we usually say it's likely for admissions, likely for affordability. So you've done research, um, making sure this college is within um, your range of finances. And then also the student likes the college. We want to work with the student and finalizing their college list this semester. You are shared the cap form part two, um, which is due on September 11th. So that um, is going to be turned in to your student's college counselor by your student. And then we're going to make sure that um, the student is looking at a well-balanced list. Um, so these are the different types of applications that your student could potentially be using, right? So it, your student could potentially be using up to maybe four to five different portals, right? So the UCs and the CSUs, the public um, California colleges, have their own portals. So CSUs have their own and UCs have their own application system, right? So here you can see CSU, their application portal opens October 1st. So if you go on to the calstate.edu slash apply site, you'll see you, um, you can fill out an application, but it won't be for the fall of 2024. So um, your students will have to wait until October 1st to fill out an application for the CSUs. And then for the UCs, it's already open for students to um, start filling out. It opened August 1st. And then both these colleges, both these systems, um, their deadlines are November 30th. Okay. There is no early action or early decision date for either of these um, two systems. And then there's the private colleges which norm and out-of-state public colleges, which normally use the Common App. And all of the deadlines vary uh, from college to college. 
So you'll have to look at the college's website or on the Common App to find those deadlines. Um, and then if your student applies to the community college, usually that application is done in February or March. All right, I want to briefly go over the types of admission plans or the type of admission applications that your student can apply for, right? Or you, you'll hear some of these different plans um, as you're selecting them in the Common App um, when you're filling out each application. So rolling which means colleges will make decisions as soon as they receive a complete application, right? So the transcripts are in, the letters of rec are in, and then they can go ahead and give a student the decision within maybe like two to six weeks, depending on the college. Um, early decision one and two. So this is kind of like a marriage to the college, okay? You're saying that I want you, the college is gonna say, I want you back, or they may um, have a deferral or um, a denial. Okay, but this is a binding process. So if the student gets in, then they have to withdraw all of their other applications, including the UCs and CSUs, which normally don't um, receive, which normally they don't um, give out their admissions until March. So this is a very serious commitment that should be talked about um, with your college counselor and as a family. So you want to make sure that financially this is um, doable as well. There is an SIED agreement that needs to be signed just so um, all parties are on the same page, the student, parents, and the college counselor. There's another option called early action or restrictive early action. So early action, you apply earlier. Normally ED, um, early decision and early action deadlines are November 1st. There are some a little bit earlier and some a little bit later, but generally November 1st is the deadline. So you apply earlier and then you hear back earlier um, with a decision from the colleges, normally around December, mid-December, some a little bit later, right? So in those cases, since you will hear back before the end of the fall semester, they do not take into account fall of senior year grades. So you really want to work with um, your college counselor to see if that is a good plan for um, your student. And then restrictive early action means there's only a few colleges that offer restrictive early action. This means that they have restrictions around their early action um, plan. For example, Yale, um, Stanford, and University of Notre Dame, those are some colleges that offer restrictive early action or Yale's, I think they call it like single choice early action program. And so their policy is usually you cannot apply to any other school, EA or ED. Okay, so you just want to read their um, website and make sure you can adhere to those um, policies. And then there's regular decision, which is also non-binding. And that's usually um, has a deadline between December to February. All right, testing. So as you may know, testing landscape has shifted since COVID, right? And it really made um, colleges question, okay, how are we using testing? What are we using it for? And is it a good measure of, a st of student success at our college? So since um, COVID happened, a lot of colleges have remained test optional. As you can see here, um, to that, about 2,000 colleges are still test optional with 80 plus test free, which means they don't even take into consideration testing, such as our um, UCs and CSUs, they are test free. So if a student submitted the test, they would not even look at it in the application process. Okay, so we kind of want to treat this as an activity. Right. If it'll enhance the student's application, then we say, you know, take it and see how you do. And then you can submit your score. So with that in mind, we do want to offer the SAT school day. Right. It is offered Wednesday, um, October 11th. And this is optional. OK, so this is for students who feel like maybe testing is something they want to highlight and then they can add that to their application. I do think it's important to note that with some data that we analyzed over the summer, um, we found that 59% of our students um, from last year, so the class of 2023, took the SAT and ACT, and 29% of those students submitted their score. Okay, so that means 29% of students thought it was a factor that they wanted to add to their application. Okay, so, and it's also important to note that acceptance data for SI has not changed pre-test optional versus post-test optional. There's not much shift. <laughs> Right. Our students have so much to add in their application. They do so much inside of the classroom, outside of the classroom. And Ms. Vaccaro will talk about the different factors that are considered, right? That testing is just treated as an activity now. So the students that submitted scores, they submitted to a range of colleges. 
right? So if you are thinking about submitting your test score, you want to talk to the colleges, look on their website, you can call the admissions office to find the most up-to-date and accurate information about their average test score for admitted students. Test scores can be um, also dependent on your major and definitely specific to the college. Okay, if you have any questions about testing, you can um, email your student's college counselor. Thank you, Ms. Wong, for covering all that data. There was also a question like, hey, how can I find that information with going test optional on the scattergram? Well, guess what? Right next to, if you go on the desktop version of SCORE, right next to that scattergram, there's an icon that lists each student who have been at SI, who have been accepted, denied, or waitlist, and whether they submitted a SCORE or not. So that is available for each of the schools. So please know they have that information. And so one thing that you all know is about transcripts, right? It's the type of courses that they take advantage of. They have also talked about, look at, you know, the grades. So they have that and they'll look at everything that's on the transcript that they earned since ninth grade year moving forward. And then for the personal statements, right? Those are the statements that the colleges will be looking at. There is the UCs, PIQs, there is the main one that coming up that goes to majority of schools. And don't forget those campus specific ones, also known as supplementals. Those are the ones the colleges are asking, why us or why this major or deeper questions that's really important to the campus. They really are wanting an authentic response, something that's real from the student. So whether if someone tries to look at different ways, like, hey, you're a great writer. Can you write this for me? Or, hey, can you just edit this like crazy um, because I, you know, I don't trust my own writing or, hey, chat GPT, can you, you know, chat bot or AI, can you do it for me? That's not going to give that authentic voice, the student voice. So critical about this because it needs to be a, that real picture of that student in their voice that they could hear. And also that means about their experiences too. So regardless of the SCOTUS decision that happened this summer, uh, you know, uh, the decision on no longer allowing race conscious admissions um, for all colleges, both public and private, students can still talk about their experiences, whether it be their diverse, their backgrounds, whether they be identity. So do keep that in mind that colleges that do have these prompts that open statements, there's also a topic of your choice, you still can look at those as well too. And then don't forget those letter recommendations, so important for that core teacher junior or senior year, right? So on score, it will tell you how many letter recommendations they'll need. And don't forget, every student who applies to any a private school or out-of-state public school will get a letter recommendation from their college counselor. That's why all those surveys will remind you of the deadlines. Did you do your survey? Have you checked with that your student if they've done their part two survey? So important. So those are things that help all of us to really give a good picture of what makes your student great. Then there's the activities. Yes, the activities, not middle school, but there are activities from high school. But a lot of times uh, students say, oh, well, look at my list. I'm like, no, I'm not looking at those. I want to look at what you accomplish in that list. And do know there could also be other roles like family responsibilities, hobbies, things have you explored your curiosity. They really are looking from your experiences and your awards and everything that you present on the application. Do we want you in our home, our college, in our dorms, in our classroom, in our clubs? How would you be an asset for our campus for what we're looking for? And then colleges would do look at what's known as yield rate, right? They want to make sure who they give an acceptance, they're going to say yes. So there are many colleges out there, um, including some out of state public schools. They'll look at demonstrated engagement. What do I mean by that? Are they opening their email? AI is around people. They can tell when a student opens an email, what they click on. Do they come to our rep meeting here? Did you go to the regional uh, visit? Did you do a virtual visit? Did you email the rep? Like, hey, that's why I couldn't do it. But hey, I learned about this. Can you tell me a little bit more about that? That's why a balanced college list is so important. So it the colleges take seven minutes of looking at about 20, 30 pages of information of your student. 
That's what we mean is a holistic review. It's a lot of information. They work really hard looking at that as well. Now, if you are an athlete who's getting actively recruited or planning to get recruited, make sure your college counselor knows this information because you still have to do mandatory steps with us that all the college counselors told their students this last Tuesday during X period. So that is so key. So please make sure that you follow all the steps, whether it be Division One, Two, Three, or NAIA. And SI has our wonderful student athletic advisor, Ms. Coach Bluford, emails on the bottom of the slide. But make sure we are all on the same page knowing about this information. And then one great teammate that we also have here is SCORE. So now sometimes I have a lot of families that go, I'm on SCORE and I can't see it. You're, the app is a great quick little tool. Reminders, what's coming up. But when you're trying to go on the drive, look at the scattergram, look at the list of kids who did when tests optional, please go on the desktop version. You're not gonna see the exact same thing on the app as the same as the desktop. So what do you need to look for? The senior year college document list, right? So these are all the documents that they'll need and also some other recommendations for them. This form, the CAP form part two, is due on September 11th to each of their college counselors. But you may say, wait, 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 wait. I just did that last time. But no, this time is a finalized list, a balanced list that you, the parent guardian, agree to, right? That's a doable and affordable college list that is likable. They like all the schools, including those likely ones. That's why it's called likable. And then also your student and then your college counselor like, okay, this looks like a good balance list. Balance in your the work level and also the list. And remember, there was a lot of questions. What is reach? What is uh, possible? What does likely mean? Well, remember the scattergram gives you a guide. Look at where your student's GPA is to help with that. And then we're there to help you too, to look at that data. But the CAP form part two does need your autograph, We'll need your student's autograph and deliver to each person of their college counselor as instructed on text period. So please make sure your students know those steps. Then if you are a family that, hey, I'm ready to marry that school, like Ms. Wong said, that early decision, again, yes, there's an ED agree agreement you sign electronically on SCORE, and you also have to do it with SI. Again, we need your autograph and the student because of binding agreement. Remember, if you do ED and get in in December, yeah, you cannot wait for UCs. You have to withdraw your applications. So that's why it's a binding agreement. It's a very serious agreement. So that's why we have an additional form for that. And then if you are an athlete, yes, we need to know you are required to fill out athlete agreement. Remember, these are for students who are being recruited. So make sure it's with your students to fill that form if they're being actively recruited. And then there is an image right there. Where does it look like, right? Down on score. So you see that imagery right down there. Financial aid overview. Okay. There's a lot of information out there and there's a lot of options in this country. So I just want to tell you this. There are lots of financial options for you and your family in any country. And I say this seriously, that there is affordable and a great path for everyone. So just keep that in mind with all the changes. Yet the reason why you need a balanced list, because the list of tasks and things you need to do for admissions, for demonstrated engagement, for homework, for everyday life and financial, it can be a lot. Okay, so we're gonna do a quick information now, very quick, but do know, mark down your calendar. Remember that calendar you're gonna post on your fridge? October 3rd, that's a Tuesday, we'll have a virtual financial aid night, right? It's just about financial aid. So if you have questions about merit aid, anyone could get merit aid. Bill Gates' kids could get merit aid. Obama's kids could get merit aid. So merit aid, scholarships, and then how to do these forms. So the free application for federal student aid is one financial aid form that all colleges would need, whether it be City College of San Francisco or Harvard. If the student, not the parent, but just the student is undocumented, there's a California Dream Act, which also myself and Ms. Hernandez in, um, in the B Center 
a dreamer liaison so we could tell more information there there's a california Stu student aid commission cal grant yes you can have the option of getting free money from the government and did you know there's the middle class scholarship and they just decided the new income rates yes they did and then also the css profile which is an additional financial aid form that over 400 colleges do use I mean, we talked about the forms, but how do I figure out this estimation? Well, I'm going to go back to the screen, so forgive me on that. There's been a, there are a lot of changes in financial aid because right now the FAFSA form, which is for those veteran parents out there, that application will not be ready October 1st. So October 1st, that is not going to be the new application. Sometime in December, it will be ready because it's new. It's less questions. You have to upload your tax form from 2022. But, hear my but, but the CSS profile still will be open October 1st. And I highly recommend that you still want to submit that application by Halloween um, families. And here's the reason why. Because like, for example, Pomona College will have an earlier date when it's due for students than the FAFSA form. So that's why it's so critical that when you're looking at financial aid, everyone is readjusting, all the colleges. So you parents and guardians, right, can go contact the financial aid office. You do the way you like. Oh, you could go pick up the phone. You could send them an email, just financial aid, and say, hey, is your net price calculator ready? Remember, since the Obama administration every college must have a net price calculator available on their website but because of all these changes not all of them are ready right especially the schools that only ask for fafsa because it's not finalized yet right so it's kind of hard for those schools so ask them when it'll be ready um that will, will be something that you could kind of look at but the css profile which is from the college board right it's an additional financial aid so a some private schools like Santa Clara, Pomona College will ask for an additional financial aid form that's open. And some of those schools may have their college cost estimators. But guess what? There's a quick, easy tool called My Intuition. If you type that in, myintuition.org, you can go in and put in all this financial information, right, um, to help you get an estimate. The only thing is, if you're in a blended family, it, it's not as accurate. So again, contact the financial aid office because you'll get to see how your retirement won't impact financial aid. Don't believe me, put $10 million in retirement. Do it, and then you'll see that. Or how assets do affect financial aid. But do know my intuition um, and net price calculators do not illustrate for all colleges merit awards. So that's why it's good to contact the school or your student can also contact um, uh, them as well and see if there's any applications or early deadlines. Boston University, there is a merit award, but their application deadline is December 1st for that, whether you're doing early decision or regular decision. So that's why that once a week checking in with your student is so critical, those deadlines, looking at that list, searching for all that information. And again, what's net price? Net price, the cost of attendance minus the gift aid. Gift aid is like, I'm giving you a gift. You don't have to pay me back. So that could be a grant if you're demonstrating need. So that, that is viewed differently from every school. It could be merit aid, meaning you have this talent. It could be GPA. It could be leadership, et cetera, et cetera. So, um, but that does not include um, loans. So that you want to make sure that the colleges that you're looking at is an affordable option. I remember I had a student who got into a private school and some public schools and was thrilled and there, the family didn't need financial aid, but then the kid thought, I know I'm gonna go to graduate school. Mom and dad, will you pay for graduate school it, um, as well? And they're like, oh no, now we're paying for that tuition. And then he goes, okay, what if I go to this public school that's cheaper in state? Then I go to law school, would you pay for both? They said, yes. So he said, yes. Yeah. It was a, a likable option for him. So remember, there's not one fit and one path for all, but you need to figure out what are your needs for your families, right? Not just what are the wants. 
So that's really important in this financial aid process. Okay, so another thing that a lot of people underestimate uh, is WUI. Um, I did have a student who turned down Georgetown for a WUI campus because it's the best option for that student, for that family, right? What is WUI? The Western Undergraduate Exchange Program. So there is a link that's gonna be on the chat where you get to see and search all those schools that are on the Western region of the United States. So let's take a look and see what this means. So WUIs are with public universities that say, we want you, yeah, you California students, and we'll give you a discount, right? So for example, if we look at UC, the tuition this year is 14,436, right? But Colorado State University, which is a WUI school, right? If you go there and don't meet the WUI requirements, did you hear that? Do not, there's WUI requirements and it varies. Arizona State University, it's a certain campus that only gives WUI. Not all the Arizona State schools are. Oregon State University is a WUI school, but it's competitive. Um, some schools like University of Nevada, Reno, you have this GPA, you get this discount automatically. So you wanna check with each of them, what are the requirements that varies for each campus. But if you weren't doing the WUI and you're, you'd be charged out of state, why am I charging out of state? Because remember, you don't pay state taxes in Colorado. You don't pay state taxes in Oregon. So here's the tuition for 32,000. So if I'm from New Jersey, applying to Colorado State University, this is how much I would pay tuition alone. We're not talking about room and board, all these other expensive fees, it adds up. But because it's a WUI school, and if my student met the requirement, I'm gonna get almost a $10,000 discount. 10,000. Some schools are even way cheaper than even a UC or possibly Cal State. So it's really important to check that out if you're looking at affordability. Because um, remember, that's affordability also means best fit for the family, not just that one student. And then also, there are some schools like University of Oregon. If you didn't catch, I said Oregon State, go Beavers, is a wooey school. University of Oregon, go Ducks is not a wooey school. So you're not getting a discount. So yes, because it's a public out-of-state school and it's not a wooey school, your tuition alone would only be 43,302. And I know some of you think, well, I'll get residency after you're, you're not reading the fine print. They don't do it that way. You have, to, you have to have residency prior to going to the school. So really important. And remember, this is just a quick overview of it. Remember, what did I say? October 3rd, financial aid night. A lot of information, a lot of changes, really important to be there. Okay, Ms. Wong. Um, so we've given you a lot of information and we've let you know lots of deadlines. So how are we gonna be communicating this with you throughout the school year? Right, so these are just some of the ways we're going to communicate, a couple of the ways. So the SI College Counseling Newsletter, that will be sent out um, at least once a month with updates of upcoming events, things you should be looking out for um, on all sorts of topics like financial aid, testing, um, scholarships even. So please look out for that. That will be sent to your email. And then SCORE will be sending emails to your students directly from SI Counseling or your student's um, college counselor, right? So this is for any X period that's coming up. Uh, we send an email to our own caseload that um, an event will, be, will become an SI or a deadline is coming up. We have some resources um, to help you and your student along in this process. So we will have a series of optional X period college app workshops. So this is just a time and a place during um, an X period in October and November. We're gonna have, I think about five um, of these college application help workshops where students just sit down and work on their application um, any application, they can if they need help filling out the application, if they need help with essays, um, if they need help filling out their activity section, all the co um, college counselors will be on deck um, helping students out. Okay, so this will be announced on SITV, this will be announced in email and in those newsletters um, that I mentioned. And then this semester, we are gonna meet individually with each student. 
Okay, so the appointment calendar will be sent out by each college counselor to their own caseload. So um, that is usually a meeting with the student talking about all the different aspects of the college process, seeing where they're at, if they have any questions, and how we can support them through this process. Okay, and we usually ask that we meet with the students first, and then uh, we are more than happy to have a family meeting at any time after we meet with the student. There is a parent reflection survey um, that was published on SCORE last semester, and many of you finished that. Thank you so much for giving us additional insights on your um, wonderful children. So we, um, us college counselors, we use that um, as a point of reference, and it really helps us write a thorough letter of recommendation for um, your student. So if you have not completed it yet, please complete it by as soon as possible. I think most parents said it took maybe about 30 to an hour to um, do a thorough survey. We have these other resources as well that highlight different colleges or deadlines that are coming up. There's an SI Twitter account. Um, follow us at SI um, Counseling. SI TV, we make a lot of announcements on there and I believe that parents can um, access this through our uh, homepage or website as well on siprep.org. We also have a wonderful SI College Counseling YouTube channel. It has various um, videos from recordings of events like this. We will also send out the recording in an email, but um, it has also like how to's, how to um, do the FERPA on SCORE and Common App, how to request a letter of recommendation. So look that over um, and see if any of those are helpful for you in this process of researching, filling out applications. Um, and there's also an SI Counseling podcast with over 70 podcasts ranging from different topics, right? There's um, Ms. Vaccaro interviews, um, admission reps, uh, financial aid officers. So um, take a listen um, when you get the chance. It's um, very, very, very helpful. If there's anything that um, you take away from our uh, presentation tonight, it's these three things plus a little more. <laughs> um, so if you want to, once again, this PowerPoint will be sent out, but if you want to take a picture of this, you're welcome to. Um, so finalizing your list, working as a team um, with your student, right? Like Mr. Vaccaro said, do what works for your family and your student. Um, in my experience with my students, I emphasize, be the driver of this. Let your parents know how to best support you. They only want what's best for you, but sometimes they don't know what the, how to show you that or how to um, best do that for you. So please communicate with them, All right? So whether that's meeting just once a week for 10 minutes, 15 minutes, right? Whatever works for um, your family, but helping them finalize their list, right? Making sure it's a balanced college list and then researching colleges, right? If you need help, resources, you know, feel free to reach out to your student's college counselor. Once you're, um, like you were saying, I'm having trouble finalizing this list. I have lots of challenge schools, far reach schools, you know, we're here to help you. Um, this cap form is very, very important. Um, it is due September 11th. The student is to turn it into their college counselor. And the way that um, it's submitted was um, told by to the student by the college counselor at the X period. Okay, so check in with your student about that. And then once again, the parent survey and the students have a survey also that they need to complete a part two of the get to know me survey. That is also due um, November, uh, sorry, <laughs> I'm getting ahead of myself, November, um, September 1st. Okay, so the get to know me surveys are also another point of reference and a resource that we use to write a well-crafted letter of recommendation for your student. Okay, in addition, there's teacher surveys. So two teachers that your student has asked to write their letter of recommendation. So that's also um, due when the cat form is turned into us. And we talked about that on Tuesday with your student. Um, once again, financial aid, a very, very important um, factor in this process. So just to highlight once again, a financial aid night, um, it's gonna be virtual October 3rd. FAFSA comes out in December because there's some changes. So the application will be out a little bit later. And CSS Profile, which stands for College Scholarship Services, that is an additional application that not all colleges require or even accept. You can Google CSS Profile Institutions. So these are colleges that have an additional, basically, bucket of money that they can offer students. Okay, um, that opens October 1st, like it has historically. So just to close, um, college, a place where your child will learn to grow and prepare for the future. So no two colleges are 
are identical, right? There are unique distinctions within each college that help a student thrive. So you want to think of all the factors, right? Think of your student's SI experience. What has made them um, shine here, right? What do they need in college, right? Is it co-op programs? Is it a certain club? Is it a certain diversity, whether that's racial, religion, um, ge geographic diversity, right? What is it that your student needs? Um, and college is a place to grow intellectually, academically, mentally, emotionally. So we really try and focus um, not on the name of the school, but what it has to offer the student. So oftentimes students will say, I want to go to this XYZ selective school. And I said, why? And they're like, I don't know, it has a good business program. What does good mean, right? So really asking those in-depth questions um, will help your student critically think about this process as well. And then lastly, um, our theme for this year is caring for our common home. And um, we have initiative this year to care for our environment um, by cleaning up after ourselves, right? Not littering. Um, we have different compost um, bins all around the school, recycling bins. And also this can carry over to this college application process in terms of caring for each other, right? I emphasize in my ex period that we are a home. We care for each other emotionally. We're all going through this at the same time. So being um, sensitive and being encouraging to one another will help us all get through this process. Um, so we thank you so much, so much for your time tonight. Um, there's one that says, ask the question, does a specific high school have an effect on college applications? So it's important to know that all colleges have a profile of a school and then the colleges are looking how the student has utilized what resources that is available, not only at their school, but also in their community as well. So, but again, it's all, it's not about having a laundry list earlier. Someone thought, oh my God, if there's 10 common app activities, you have to do all 10. No, no, no. It's all about quality, not quantity. One of the things that people are saying like, wait, 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 I'm trying to manipulate the data on score to be a certain year. So score um, presets those years on the scattergram. Um, and so that's not something that uh, manipulate, but remember, there's different roles. So students also, they have their score account. What year, Ms. Wong, can um, students' score accounts go to? I believe they go to 2020. You're right. And But the thing is, when we meet with the students or there's questions like, hey, I heard TCU has changed quite a bit because they just won the national football championship. That's some, some information that we could provide too, but it's still a really good, helpful guide. Are you limited to applying to only one college for early decision? Yes, yes, yes. Only one ED1. Um, there are some schools like Lehigh University in Pennsylvania offers ED2, which is the January deadline, but you cannot even start that process until you're denied your ED1. So remember, that's why there's so many agreements that you've signed through SCORE, um, on Common App, you have to indicate your ED. Um, even with SI, you need to do that because it has to be something that we approve the, uh, the parent or guardian approves and then the student approves as well. There is another question here. Activities and extracurricular are deemed high, not critical on the UCCSU. Do you have any further context for this definition? Um, I know you quote high and quote critical. Uh, remember, if a college is asking any question, it's important to that college. It, if you go to the UC's admission factors, there's 13 of them. Yes, it is activities. If anything, students, you know, they have over about 250 characters to describe their activities. UC's gets thousands of applications and they take the time to read all that because one's accomplishments um, is key. It's not the only thing that's gonna get them in because it's a holistic group. Remember all those factors we went through. Cal State's, they're gonna ask, hey, did your job relate to your major? Hey, were you part of a CBO program? Um, hey, you know, for the CSUs, you know, uh, how many hours did you volunteer? Again, they're asking because it is important, again, in that process. Come out, Ms. Wong, you wanna remind our families um, how often the newsletter will come out to them? Yeah, the newsletter will come out at least once a month. Uh, about um, AP scores. Uh, so remember, for the schools that are test free, they will still look at AP scores. Um, you know, remember, it's a holistic view. So every campus decides what is their institution, 
priorities. So everyone's going to value some aspects more than the other. And that's why understanding the mission statement, the culture of the school, when you're researching school, score is a great uh, tool, but there's Instagram uh, from each of the campuses. There's YouTube on there. There's so many resources. Some colleges like Georgia Tech has their own podcast. So it's important that you uh, look into it because there's an answer that's going to be different for every campus that's out there. The next question is, what is the guidance on students taking days off to visit college campuses this semester? So uh, we always love when students go visit campuses, but one of the things that's important to know that they will still be reported as unexcused, uh, whether it's an official visit. So just keep in mind to read the student parent handbook. Uh, you still have to honor um, uh, those guidelines on there. So they're not considered excused absences, but it's some, but it's something that's doable. Sometimes we have students who do um, interviews for a job or a scholarship. Um, you just need to let the Dean's office be aware of that. Check with the teachers and make sure you don't exceed the amount uh, stated on the handbook. In addition, I would like to add from the college visit perspective, at this point in the process, we really do think that students should focus most of their energies on applying to colleges, right? In the spring, once students have a smaller list of schools that they've narrowed it down to, that's a, a really effective time to be doing those college visits, right? Not only will individual colleges have admitted student programs where students can get a really good in-depth look at academic opportunities, student life, professional development, things like that, but oftentimes they can even meet lots of current students. Those programs almost all happen in the spring. So if you're wondering, you know, you wanna get some last visits in, I would actually encourage holding off until uh, until the springtime once you've gotten some admission decisions under your belt. Thank you so much. You know, if you're like, but I really don't know what this campus feels like, there's virtual visits, you know, that you could do that. Uh, yes, there's, there is time in the spring semester. And if you're thinking, no, you just said demonstrated engagement. Well, some campuses don't do that. Oh, just to confirm, did you say that even if you submit SAT scores to CSU, UCs, they won't even look at it? Yes, it is a test-free school. Um, I have it right here, there's 80 test-free institutions. So they're not using tests, why? Because there is data out there that it does not help in selecting the best and the greatest students. So for UCs and Cal States, test-free. So that is correct. So there was a question that I saw about demonstrated interest, demonstrated engagement. Um, and, you know, in general, it's a good idea to engage with colleges that you are excited about, even if the campus does not actually track demonstrated interest, right? Some schools are really explicit about saying, no, we do not track demonstrated interest, right? But engaging with virtual visits, reading emails, understanding student stories, understanding the specific programs that make a college unique, is what we would call demonstrated understanding, right? And that understanding is what can often set an applicant apart from the rest of the crowd, even, even if the college doesn't actually track the data of demonstrated interest, right? Um, and even for the colleges that do track demonstrated interest, e each college will do that a little bit differently. Um, but generally speaking, right, it's a good idea to attend visits if a rep is visiting the school, right? That's always going to make a good impression and maybe we'll also you know, be a part of that data. It's a good idea to do interviews, right? If a school offers interviews, they list that on their admissions website. They usually send out communications to applicants about that. It's always a good idea to do an interview. And we understand that it's frustrating. There are lots of asterisks, right? I mean, I can think of at least one school that offers interviews that don't count towards demonstrated interest, right? And so it's best to, you know, yes, you want to think about the, the micro level of the data, but also to think about the macro level, right? Your understanding of a college campus um, and your engagement with the qualities and the values of that campus. Campus does offer interviews where you have to schedule it. Please do it sooner versus later. We had a lot of students last year Oh, Chapman ran out of space. Syracuse, a lot of students um, ran out of space. Um, you know, you know, and then you, and that's why you want to look at that calendar. That's why you want to have that once a week check in um, to make sure it's balanced. 
for all the tasks you need to do. Make sure you have those, you know, what Ms. Wong went over, that challenge, that possible likely list. Make sure it's also a campuses that they like. And then you as a family like, whether it be for affordability or you know that college has your kids back. Um, it's not only about best fit, but it's also best support and best growth for your child in their future adventures. Submit your full application before you can uh, schedule an interview. No, so like I described it to students, whether it's regarding letter recommendations, transcripts, or interviews, pretend we're going to Amazon and we're gonna order a whole bunch of packages. The key thing is that everything arrives by the deadline date. But for interviews, it's when the calendar is for the college. So some of them have a, a longer window of doing virtual interviews or not. And then we can, um, if it's during the school day, we could have a room here for them here at SI. So they need that quiet space. So what needs to be done, if there's a financial aid form deadline, a verification form, whether it be for admissions or financial aid, you need to meet that deadline. If there's a scholarship deadline, finish your research, make sure it's it's holistic for you as a family and then make sure you get all those deadlines and tasks and remember those admission reps are available it doesn't matter if you're first generation or 20th generation email them there's a lot of changes a lot of different deadlines it's very easy to get lost in the process should they take the sat if they're only applying for a private school well remember what's that number there's 2,000 schools that are test optional 80 of them, some are even private, are test free. So remember, when we talk about holistic, there's a laundry list of, for a student to put on their profile on their application. Right? There's only a few private schools nationwide that require the test. And the reason why there's so many schools still test optional, because it's working out for the colleges finding some amazing students even without the test scores. If you have any other questions, feel free to ask your student's college counselor. Um, we are here to answer your questions. Hopefully this was very helpful and insightful. We really, really appreciate your time. I know um, these nights are a good time for family time, so we really appreciate um, you spending part of your evening with us. Thank you, have a good evening.